welcome back today in this video you will learn about conflict specificity and inheritance to become proficient in css it is crucial to grasp a few fundamental theoretical concepts these concepts are of significant importance and form the building blocks for mastering css in the long run in this video we will explore the scenarios where multiple CSS rules are applied to the same elements. We will delve into what exactly happens and how it affects the styling of those elements. In order to grasp this concept effectively, let's start by understanding conflicts, then we will delve into the topic of specificity and then finally, we will explore inheritance. This step-by-step -step approach will help us comprehensively cover each aspect. So first of all, we have CSS conflicts. CSS conflicts occurs when there are conflicting styles applied to the same element or group of element on a web page. These conflicts can lead to unexpected and undesired visual effects such as elements appearing differently than intended or not displaying at all. There are few causes of CSS conflicts. The first one is specificity. CSS selectors have different level of specificity which determines which styles take precedence over others. If two conflicting selectors have the same specificity, the order in which they are defined in the CSS file becomes important. The last rule defined will override previous rule. Now the second cause is cascade and the cascade refers to the order in which styles are applied to elements. If conflicting styles are defined in different style sheet or within different part of the same style sheet, the order in which they are linked or imported can affect the final appearance of the elements. And then we have inheritance. CSS properties can be inherited from parent elements to their children. If conflicting styles are applied to both the parent and child elements, the child element styles may be overridden by the parent styles. This can lead to unexpected conflicts. To resolve CSS conflicts, there are few strategies that we can employ. Now the first one is use more specific selectors. When defining your CSS rules, consider using more specific selector to target the desired elements. This can help avoid conflicts with other styles that have less specificity. Second thing that we can do is reorder style sheets. If conflicting styles are defined in different style sheet, ensure that the desired styles are defined last. So they take precedence over previous conflicting styles. And the third one is to use important keyword. The important declaration can be added to a CSS rule to give it the highest specificity. Overriding any conflicting styles, however, it is generally recommended to use this sparingly as it can make the CSS harder to maintain. Now next up, we have review and refactor CSS. Take the time to review your CSS code and identify any conflicting or redundant styles. Refactor your code to improve unnecessary conflicts and streamline your style sheets. By understanding the causes of CSS conflicts and implementing these strategies, we can effectively manage and resolve conflicts to achieve the desired visual appearance for our web pages. In order to understand this, consider this example. In this example, a paragraph has both an element selector and a clause selector, targeting it with conflicting color styles. The browser resolves this conflict by giving precedence to the class selector resulting in blue text color. Understanding conflicts and their resolution is essential for maintaining consistent and predictable styles in web development. Now we are going to learn about specificity in more detail. Now the specificity in CSS refers to the set of rules that determine which CSS styles are applied to an HTML element when multiple conflicting styles target the same element. It's a way for the browser to decide which styles declaration should take precedence over others. Specificity is essential for resolving conflicts and ensuring that the correct styles are applied to elements. Specificity can be thought of as ranking system that determines which style declaration take effects on an element 
it helps establish the hierarchy of styles and ensures that the most specific declaration is applied. Selectors in CSS can be categorized into four specificity levels. The first level is inline styles, which are directly applied to HTML element using the style attribute. For example, you can define a paragraph with a yellow color by using the inline styles. The second level is IDs, which are unique identifier assigned to specific element in the HTML document. For instance, you can select a paragraph by its ID using hashtag paragraph. The third level include classes, pseudo classes and attribute selectors. An example of these selectors would be selecting an element with class para using dot para or targeting a hyperlink with href attribute. Lastly, the fourth specificity level encompasses elements and pseudo elements. Elements refer to HTML tags such as h1 for heading. Pseudo element allow you to style specific part of an element content before or after it is rendered on the page using before or after. Understanding these specificity levels helps in effectively targeting and styling different elements within our web pages using CSS selectors. No specificity is typically calculated based on the following factors. Now the first one is type of selectors. Different type of CSS selectors have varying specificity levels. For example, ID selector are more specific than class selector or element selector. And then we have number of selectors. The more selectors used in rules, the higher the specificity. For instance, H1 has the lower specificity than div and p. Styles defined directly within an HTML element using the style attribute have the highest specificity and will override external style sheet styles. And the last one is important. Adding important to a style declaration give it the highest specificity and takes precedence over all other styles. Now here on the screen you can see a table that includes a selector, its specificity value and a calculation. This visual representation is designed to enhance your understanding of this topic. Understanding specificity is crucial for effectively managing and debugging styles in CSS. Now next up we have inheritance. Inheritance in CSS is a fundamental concept that allows styles applied to one HTML element to be passed down and applied to its child elements, creating a consistent and structured design. Inheritance simplifies the styling process by reducing the need to explicitly define styles for every individual element within a specific context. Elements inherit styles from their parent elements unless otherwise specified. For example, if you set a font family, color or text alignment on a parent container like a div, any text element with that container such as paragraph or span element will inherit those styles by default. This hierarchical approach to styling enhances code maintainability and allows developers to establish a coherent design system. And there you have it. Understanding selectors conflict specificity is key to becoming a CSS pro. Remember, keep it simple, use important sparingly and pay attention to specificity of your selectors. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button to join this exciting web development journey with us. And if you have any questions or suggestions, you can put those in the comment section below. Until next time, keep coding and creating. I will see you in the next video.